Welcome to House Call Auto Repair. Today is April 25th, 2020. We're going to show you guys that are just sitting around the house today how to go about doing a brake job. We're going to be working today on my 2006 Toyota Corolla. I'm going to do the front brakes. We're going to show you step by step what to look for, how to go about doing it, how to prepare yourself, and how to actually do the job. So come join me and we'll get this thing up in the air and being that it's just you and i out here today take this thing off I'm not going near anybody i don't think the car's gonna catch it i don't think it'll hurt the car anyways but uh you never know trump might find out that there's something bad about your your car getting it or something i don't know gotta inject it with uv According to Trump. Normally, I don't get into politics and stuff, but God, he's an idiot. First thing you want to do is get your vehicle into where you're going to work on it, get it onto some level ground, and then turn your steering wheel all the way to one side. Get underneath your wheel well and look at your bolts. The bolt here, bolt down here. Figure out what size those are, get your wrenches ready. I got all my batteries ready. Bag of rags. And all this junk out of the trunk. Make some room to get that stuff. And your rotors paper towels, we'll be needing those, the jack stands, we'll need both of those, we're going to be needing a jack, you know my miscellaneous junk in here, this is my mobile workshop, got all my chemicals and brake cleaner and gloves and scrubby stuff and tools and jacks and boards and more tools and all sorts of stuff in here but today we're working on that we're gonna get those brakes done all right we got the brakes rotors the jack paper towels brake fluid you'll see why in a little bit we're gonna do something different brake parts cleaner fluid film for cutting down on the rust later on wire brush for cleaning stuff up with Half inch impact to speed up the disassembly. Clamp to push back the piston. Got a caliper file. I'll uh, put the link, a link uh, to Eric O's page for the uh, Muller Cubes file. I got this from watching one of his videos. Super, super, super file. So I'll give you the link to uh, Eric O's uh, Amazon affiliate page there. Breaker bar, half inch extension, 17 millimeter, 14 millimeter. Got a lug, uh, one for the lug nuts. The eight millimeter for this, for the bleed screw. Player pliers for pinching off the brake line so we don't push any of the old fluid up into the master cylinder. I'll explain when I get there. And just in case you don't have one of these, this is standard flat file. We'll do the, do the job for cleaning up the caliper. Here's one brand new from Walmart, haven't used it yet half inch drive wrench and we've got pretty much everything here there's the jack stands let's get this thing up in the air get the wheel off and get started get started by loosening up all the lug nuts we want to do this on both sides of the car Go ahead and take all but two of them off if you want. You leave two of them on there until you have removed the vehicle from, you know, the weight lifted the vehicle up in the air. And I'm going to go around the other side to loosen those up.
the pine up in the air. Your jack stand underneath. And repeat on the other side. Go ahead and remove the wheels. And set the tire underneath the car for extra safety. You know, while you're in here, always do your checkups. You know, in this case, we're getting kind of low on the brakes. You can see that. The rotors are pretty well glazed. And I don't know if you can see this or not. There's something that's going to need to be replaced. Sway bar link. Boot looks good. Brake line looks good. All your connections are good. There's no chafing or cracks anywhere. Spring is all good. Strut clean, dry. Let's get around the other side. Tie rod right end boot. I'm down here at the ball joint. Everything here looks good. Just really, really worn. Get around here to the other side. And same thing. Now you'll note this hole right here, you can look through this hole and you can see in here, right there, there's really not much material left in there. Let's see if I can get you a shot. Very little material left in that, in that hole. You can see right here, very little. Now this rotor is severely warped. It shakes the steering wheel all over the place. Put these in last year. They didn't last very long. Warped them pretty badly. So we're replacing it all today. Everything's nice and clean, dry. No issues over here. Everything down there looks good. Boots all look good. All the way up to the transmission looks good. Everything down here looks good. Everything over here looks good. Yep. And this, uh, can't see it. Now, let me turn the steering wheel so you can see this because that one there's torn too. Yeah, this one's torn open too. So we're going to be having to replace both of these sway bar links. We're not going to do that today, but we will be doing that soon. Okay, seems we're going to be starting this first. Turn the wheel back again. This way, 
The steering wheel is unlocked. Both wheels are off the ground so you can turn the whole assembly nice and easy. There we go. I'm going to take the set of 14 millimeter. I'm going to break both of these loose. Breaker bar, 14 millimeter. And we're gonna use the C-clamp. We're gonna push the piston back just a hair. And the only reason we're doing this is so that we can get the brakes over the lip on the rotor. If they're as worn as these are, there will be a lip and they will be a little difficult to get off. We do not, at this point, want to press the rotor or the caliper all the way back. Just a little bit. And we got, got our movement. Okay, now, this is where we're going to do something just a little bit different. We're going to take... I'm going to take these pliers right here. And we're going to clip the brake line. You want it just tight enough that it's going to be able to block off the flow of brake fluid, but not crush the brake line. Got it clamped down just like that. Right here. This will prevent fluid from going back up through the system. Now we're going to open up the bleeder screw, which is this one right here. Hopefully you guys can see that. Now, just keep in mind, every tool is a hammer. You just lightly tap on that to open it up. And don't try forcing these, because they'll usually break on you. But when you get in here with a wrench like this and tap on it, they'll usually loosen up a lot easier for you. Now, before I start squeezing this, I have to grab a uh, small hose that I can hook up and an extra an empty container to drain the fluid into. We don't want to drain this onto the ground. Make sure your uh, master cylinder is full. Look at over here to the master cylinder. Let's see, there's uh, Eric says enhance, enhance, enhance. There we go. You shake it, you can see where the level is and light passing through it. Unenhance. Thanks, Eric. Now you want to leave the wrench on the bleeder. Take your small hose and force it over the end of the bleeder screw. In this case, it's going to be a little hard because the bleeder screw is bigger than the hose. But I've used this a million and a half times before. Once you got it all the way on there, take the hose, put it in your empty brake fluid bottle or other suitable container that won't dissolve from brake fluid. And then go ahead and put your C-clamp back on. And we want to have this wrench in a position where I can tighten it back up when I'm done compressing. And we'll press it just a little bit more all right now I'm gonna bring that back up and lock it make sure that bleeder is closed before you release your clamp we'll finish that up in a few minutes let's get these upper bolts this caliper bolts out of here
set your caliper bolts aside. And of course, I forgot the hook. Little bird feeder hook. Buy these things for a couple of bucks over at Walmart. You reach way up into your coil spring. Hook it over the top of your coil spring. And then you can take your caliper, hang it off the hook, and there's no chance of it falling on the ground and yanking on your wire. Now we're gonna take your caliper bracket off. That's the 17 millimeter. Nice and loosened up. And this is where you got to use that short extension. Yeah. Caliper bracket bolt out. The other caliper bracket bolt out. And set your caliper bracket down. In this case, my caliper bracket come off. Both of the brake shoes, they're not really stuck. There's a little bit of movement in them. In this case, the hardware is the only thing that's really holding them. So they're not stuck or bound, but sometimes they'll get stuck in here. Go ahead and remove the brake pads from the bracket. And you got your hardware, lift your hardware up and off. That one came off with the other side. And then what we're going to want to do is clean up this surface right in here using a little blue file. Now see how that fits right in there? You just get in here and clean that up. All, all the surfaces that those brackets come in, little, you know, those little clips. And I get all the surfaces that those come in contact with. Do that on both sides. I did these not that long ago. Put a little bit of silicone grease on here, prevented it from rusting back up again, and it did a pretty good job. As we have very little rust in here, very little rust. I'm happy with that. This is what gloves are good for. But I don't do this every day. I don't do this multiple times a day, so it's not that hard to scrub off. And it, uh oh, you want to make sure your pins move in and out nice and easily, turn back and forth. This one here doesn't want to budge. That one doesn't want to budge. So we're going to have to take that out, clean that up. Quick lesson while you're out here don't back into a police car. And then drive away. That's 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 not a good move. The uh, they're down here making sure people aren't uh, congregating. And in this case, the guy decided to hit a police car. At two o'clock in the afternoon. And it's 63 degrees. Oh, you guys can see that. There we go. 63 degrees. 
honestly wasn't expecting this. But grab a pair of ice grips, grab a hold of the end of the pin, in this case we can get it to move. Slide the boot. Don't pull the boot out of the bracket. Make sure you pull the boot. See, so we'll do this right here. Get the boot right here off the top of the pin. See the rust in there? So we're gonna get this pin, rest of the way out, and clean all of this up. off of this. All the way up to the top too. And then we'll take the vial. Be careful with this one because this one's really aggressive. Then we'll grab the other one. My little cheapy one. Get all the rust off of it. Probably do this with some sandpaper too, but sandpaper usually won't make it quite as smooth or level. You don't want to create any pitting or anything like that in this. And just get the, the rust off of it. Nice so little diagonal movements with the file. Here at the top, I'm gonna wire brush this one. I'll be right back. All right, we got the pin all nice and cleaned up. Shine that up on the wire brush. Well, if you heard that or not, but hey, guy stopped at the intersection. The cruiser went to pull up behind him, and the guy backed up, backed right into the police car. There's a nice clean pen. Spray some uh, brake cleaner in here. Nice, slow and gentle. Get it filled right up with brake cleaner. And then just get right down in here and work it around. Get in and out of there nice and easy. And go ahead and clean the pin back off again. You don't want to take this boot out of here unless you absolutely have to. Get that cleaned out. Rinse it right out. Now we're going to grab our silicone grease and Silaglide. Not a sponsor. Put some of that on the pin. Don't have to go too much with it. Make sure you got it up uh, up around the top here. And slide your pin back down in. And rotate it as you're going back down in. It helps evenly distribute the grease. And it helps make sure that you've got grease coming up around the top here, which is going to 
help provide a seal on the top of that boot so that it doesn't go rusting up on you again. And the other side, I'm going to pop this off, clean this one up as well just to play it safe. Now, once you got those cleaned up, you see how you pull on it, it wrinkles, it means there's a good vacuum in there, it means you got a good seal. As long as it does that on both sides, you got a good seal. You want that good seal because you don't want water getting in there. Now go ahead and take your rotor off. Okay, in this case, the rotor's stuck. Oh. Get behind it. That was easy enough. Pop the old rotor off. And now we're going to take the brake cleaner, clean up the new one. In this case, we're using some high carbon coated rotors. These don't really need brake cleaner. Put these right on. We'll spray them down with brake cleaner, anyways. it back on actually let's make sure we grease these here first we'll put the hardware on Eric likes to put his brake pads you know the new brake pads he likes to put those into the caliper bracket before putting the bracket on I have a tendency to like to put my clips in put the bracket on put the brake pads in it afterwards so I need to go grab those brake pads. Those are clips. This comes with a little package of squealers. The uh, brake pads that I had in here did not have squealers on it. Always remember that the squealers go on the leading edge. The tire rotates this way, so the leading edge is gonna be the top. If the caliper bracket was in the back, the leading edge would be at the bottom. So we're going to be putting these on the new brake pads. They're all individually wrapped. I'm assuming these are all exactly the same. Get them all out of here. Important read before installing your new brake pads. little information about cleaning and reconditioning types of wear and it's both English and Spanish put it on my pinky a little glob about that big is enough to do the entire caliper so just get in here a little dab in each track and then just work it around to coat all the surfaces be particularly careful while you're doing this because these edges are very sharp you can cut your finger very very easily doing this now let me emphasize, you can slice your finger doing this, so be careful. You might, be, you might even want to use a, a small paintbrush or something of that nature. I've, I've done this enough times to slice my finger enough time to learn how to not cut my finger. Now that those are coated, 
open the hardware bag. Grab two of the hardware clips. In this case, all four of them are exactly the same. Let's see if we can get you where you can see what I'm doing. All right, take these clips. Make sure you get your orientation right. And just push them down into place. Make sure that they actually fit in there correctly. These seem to fit a little funky, but they fit. This little curve in here wants to push them back up. But what's important is this is right in here is where your brake pads are going to ride. They push down on this edge right here and they ride it down in this edge. In this particular case, these actually ride all the way down in the edge. Some ride on the top, some ride down inside. These have really long ears on them, so your actual pressure point is going to be right here. So I'm going to put these on in a second, put the bracket back on. Probably should use some blue Loctite on these, but I've never had an issue with them. Always fun finding that first hole. Get your caliper bracket bolts back in place here. I don't know if you can see this. Clips fall down. Push them right back up in place again. Fingerprints all over my rotor. Let's give it a spray again. All right, now grab one of our little clips. Typically, they'll go on the inboard pad. Now this is the, this is the edge that fits towards your axle. This is towards the outside. It's going to sit in this way. The leading edge is going to be up at the top. You got little insets right in here for these to fit into. Make sure that when you put them in, they go in just like this. So that just a little bit of this. Right here, this tiny little edge is the only thing that sticks over the edge. That's just so that this will squeal when that brake pad gets extremely worn down. This goes on the inboard. Get all my little clips back up in place again. Put them in at an angle and then just rotate them into place. Same thing on the outside. Put it in the groove and rotate it. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it doesn't go so easy. And rotate them into place. Come on, rotate into place. There we go. And then make sure everything moves. Oops, pop that one out. 
And then go ahead and tighten down your caliper bracket. I don't have my impact or my uh, torque wrench out here today. So we're just going to give these about two or three ugga duggas. And these nice and snug. Somebody might be able to get those back off. Morning's already in here. Morning's moving the way it should be. All right, now back to the caliper itself. I'm gonna take the caliper, bring the caliper out here where you guys can see it. We're still clamped on the line up above. We're going to take the C-clamp. You can use a brake pad against the piston on the inside if you choose. Let's get it off the hook so you guys can see here. You can take one of your old brake pads, set it in here like so, and then use your C-clamp. Okay, now before I go doing this, I'm going to show you guys something real quick to double check. This boot right here. Let's see. This boot right here. want to make sure there's no cracks, tears, any junk stuck to it, built up on it. Make sure it is clean all the way around before you start pushing that piston back in. Put the brake pad in place. And then tighten it up. Now you're going to find, because we have the line clamped, you can tighten this clamp up, it's not going to go anywhere. So, turn this back over so you guys can see what we're doing on the other side of it. Put it back up on the hook here. So we don't have any accidents. All right. Grab our empty brake container, brake fluid container. Set that down. And we're going to open the bleeder screw back up. Always keep this at the highest point. With the bleeder screw open, go ahead and press your piston all the way back in. I'll see if I can show you this. As I'm pressing, see how the fluid's going through? Now the reason that we're doing this is because brake fluid pulls moisture right out of the air. And what'll end up happening is the water will start to accumulate in your brake fluid. It ends up down in your calipers or in your, your brake cylinders. When they get really hot, it boils. The water will come out in the form of a vapor. You'll have gas and water vapor separates and it rusts up the inside of your caliper. You don't want that. So what you want to do is periodically, at least once every four years or so, flush all your brake fluid out. And this is one of the easiest ways of doing it. So while you're doing your brakes, just pump all the old brake fluid out once you've got your caliper piston bottomed and tight tighten up your bleeder screw you will not need to bleed it out when you're done make sure your bleeder screw is tight before releasing your clamp brake pad should fall out of here Now, pull it back up off the hook again and double check, verify 
that none of your boot is sticking out. Everything retracted all the way. If it did, you're ready to put your caliper bracket, your caliper back on. Go ahead and slide your caliper back in place. Line your pins up. May have to rotate them back and forth a little bit. Put your bolts back in. Again, double check that everything is in place. You got your movement. Your bleeder screws nice and tight. Go ahead and remove your hose. Don't spill your brake fluid all over the place. If you have a little rubber cap, make sure you put your little rubber cap back on it. And I like to do just to play it safe. Where's my silicone? I just put a little bit of a little glob of it in there. But this way here, when I put it on, it'll prevent the inside of that from getting all rusted up. So hopefully, I don't have any problems with it in the future. Now go ahead and tighten up your uh, caliper bolts. These are about two wagadagas. Nice and snug. Go ahead and take your line clamp off. Remove your hook. Inspect your work. Make sure everything's in place. Double check. You've tightened everything up. In this case, we only had the four bolts and the one bleeder screw are already tight everything's all set on this side give it another blast of the brake cleaner and go ahead and put your wheel back on this side's done and then just repeat the same process over on the other side. This is what you do on a day like today. You got nothing out here. Nothing going on. Beautiful sunny day. Everything's still closed. Because of that, uh, yeah, thing nobody wants to talk about. But, yeah, this is how you do your breaks. Pick a nice afternoon like today. Get out here. Have some fun. Check up your car. Yeah. Well, my new thing now, guys, is now you got no more excuses. Go pick up those wrenches. Get out here and get some work done. Make sure you pump that brake pedal back up. Now after you pump your brake pedal back up, make sure that your fluid level is still okay and add if necessary. Just until it gets up. So right here is the full mark on this one. I'll add it right to the full mark. Don't fill it any higher. You need to make room for expansion. And that's your complete brake job.
Now let's take it out and bed these brakes. No more excuses, people. Pick up those wrenches. 